Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. I'm really excited about this video. I asked examiners on Twitter if you had one piece of advice you could give from all of your examining experience, what would it be? And I had over 75 responses. Here's the original tweet. I'm going to go through some of the most popular answers for English language in this video and next week we'll look at the answers for English literature. But before we get into it, let me just tell you why this is so important. Your average examiner will mark hundreds of papers. So they will see hundreds of answers to the same questions and those answers will come from all sorts of different students from all sorts of different schools all over the country. So if I then go to those examiners and say okay from all of that experience if you had to give one tip what would it be? Then what they say is obviously important. And then what I found is that so many examiners said the same thing. So it's so important that we grasp the fact that we're essentially looking at the marking of thousands of papers and the main tips the examiners are giving from marking those thousands of papers. So the first is to do with timing. Now let's look at the wording of a few of these comments. Timing and weighting of questions. Watch your timing. Answer every question and don't spend more than the recommended time on any. And this last comment I think is really particularly interesting. For language, take time to really read the extracts. It is a reading exam after all. So the big question for me is how do examiners who don't see the students take the exams after all know that timing is an issue? And of course what happens is students either miss questions entirely or write not enough for the high mark questions or perhaps too much for the low mark questions. Now in language paper one the paper is worth a total of 80 marks and if we take 10 minutes to read the source that leaves us with 95 minutes to gain 80 marks. So we're spending about one minute per mark available just over. So as a rough guide, you should spend around 5 minutes on question 1, 10 on question 2, 10 on question 3, 25 minutes on question 4, and 45 minutes on question 5. Now from my own experience, I can tell you that many students write the same amount for question 4 as they do for question 3 and for question 2. But if you look at it on the screen here, it's clear. Question 4 is worth more than twice as many marks as question 2. It's worth more marks than 2 and 3 put together. So Obviously, it requires a more detailed answer, and timing is key. Now, if you look at the marks available, they increase as the paper progresses. So if you spend too long on these early questions, you'll run out of time on the higher mark questions. And clearly, this is something examiners are finding time and time again. And it's not easy. Something like question two, the language analysis question, it's very easy to spend 20 minutes on that question, even 30 minutes. But it's only an eight mark question, and you should spend 10 minutes on on it and then move on. And to make life harder, it's not as if there's somebody in the exam hall saying, OK, 10 minutes is gone, move on to the next question. You've got to look at the clock in the exam hall, see where you're at with the time, give yourself 10 minutes, work on the question, do your best, and then move on. And that is the same for paper two. If we allow 10 minutes to read the sources, then we're talking about five minutes on question one, 10 on question two, 15 on question 3, 20 minutes on question 4, and again 45 minutes on question 5. And we'll come back to that question 5 in a second. Now this is to do with the writing question in paper 1 and paper 2 to plan your answer. Take the time to plan the writing. A clear structure leading to a planned ending is well worth the time. Plan that creative writing, then use the plan and it makes a difference. Plan your writing in question 5. And this last one, again, so interesting because this is something that I think you probably have heard before that you should plan your answer, but I feel like this comment at the end really summed it up well. Really don't think that you will be able to get away with not planning question 5 on the language papers. Most responses will not have been planned properly or at all, and the difference between those and the ones which have been planned is stark and unmistakable. If you take nothing else from this video today, take this. If you do not plan question 5, the difference in your answer to someone who has planned it will be stark and unmistakable. And of course, this one question is worth half the marks of the entire paper, so you have the time to plan. Timing is so important, but a 45-minute question, you've got time to plan. You've got five minutes to plan. And as I go through in my video, my animated video on paper one question five, planning could be the content, but also the skills you're going to demonstrate in your answer, the punctuation you're going to use, the technical skills, the structural features you want to demonstrate to the examiner. So again, it's probably something you've heard before, but planning is absolutely key. And the last one I want to go through, which was the most liked comment, is this one. 
continually ask yourself why when doing language questions. E.g., this is a quote. Well, why is the writer using this? It's a metaphor. Why use a metaphor here? Now, if you watch my animated videos, you'll know that just because you can find a metaphor in question two of paper one or a cyclical structure in question three of paper one, you're not really rewarded for that. You need to write about the effect. And you can only get a band two at best, that's half marks, if you write a generic effect. This grabs your attention, it draws you in, it makes you want to read on, it's powerful. So continually asking yourself why, so you might find that language feature, but why is it used? What is the effect? So if you see my animated video on paper one question, Question two. We look at this part of the brightly text. The water could be heard dripping below like a chime of fairy bells. And you might think, well, there's a simile. But you need to ask, why is that simile used? And you can see in the sample answer there, you can read it on screen or watch the video. It's the why that is the key part of this answer. Just being able to identify a simile is not going to get you anywhere. You need a specific, contextualized and precise analysis of why it's used. So continually asking yourself why is a great way to do that. Well, I hope you found this video useful. Next week, we'll look at the feedback for literature. If you like these sorts of videos, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. On the screen, I'll link a couple of the videos now that I've mentioned during this video.